And welcome to Fat Squirrel Speaks. Today is Tuesday, November 5th. It's November, y'all. And this episode, I think it's 86. Hi, how are you? Really? Do you see what? I thought I had a tissue in my pocket, and what I in fact have is a tissue that Annie tore up that I just picked up five minutes ago in my pocket. That's not effective. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, this is Fat Squirrel Speaks. I said that right. I am your hostess, Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry, or the Fat Squirrel, it's S-Q-R-R-L, on Instagram. Do we have administrativeness? Administrativeness. Um, if you are administrati, if you won a prize in last week's episode, um, I will get those out this week, hopefully. Yes, I will. Not hopefully. I will totally do it. Do it this week, okay? But if you haven't emailed me or PM'd me on Ravelry with your name in the real world so that the postmaster knows it's you and your addressio, please do so. Thank you very much. This week's episode will contain shenanigans, potential shenanigans. I don't know. That's what those are called. We'll discuss when we get there. pre shenanigans. And spinning and knitting and shameless self-promotion. And also buy all the stuff in the world. That's not mine, but also mine, please. Okay, thank you. So many of you have. Thank you very much. So, let's get into it, okay? Shenanigans! What are the shenanigans for this week? Well, the shenanigans for this week were that it was Halloween. Oh, was it exciting? Did you have fun? Our Halloween actually got moved. It was supposed to be on Thursday, because that was, in fact, Halloween. <laughs> but we had very high winds and rain. And, of course, all of uh, the old people who are shenan shenaniganing. <laughs> As Halloween is now called. The, old, the adults who went... We're all like, in my day, they would have never canceled Halloween. It was because there was no internet then to tell everybody, hey, don't come to Halloween. But anyway, so we were all like, oh, it's just a little wind. And then really, let's face it, the wind, we are, we lost our power, which we never lose our power because we're in the city. But we, like our power flickered for a good hour. It went on and off. And the best thing is my husband was really, he had just decided he must watch Underworld. In fact, I think maybe it was the second one. Maybe it was not the first one. You know, like the vampires versus werewolves. Ding, 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 ding. So he decided he had to watch that. Well, the power started to go off in like the like last pivotal 20 minutes of the movie. <laughs> so the power would go off and everything shut down. And he'd be like, oh! And then we'd wait and the power would come on and be like, just wait because it's going to go off. So then it would go off in a few minutes. And then finally, like it would stay on for like 10 minutes. I'd be like, it's your call, man, because I'm totally fine. We've watched it before, we know what happens. Well, really, I don't know what happens because I've forgotten. Hi. Oh, I'm buying my my Rika hat. Rike? I don't know. R-I-K-K-E. I don't know who made it. But I think it's one of my favorite new hats. And this is um, the DK by the Leading Men Fiber Arts. Is that right? Leading Men, you know, Leading Men. The one who did the fall colorway that everybody's obsessed with. Um, This is their DK and the Into the Woods colorway right they have a little drama thing that's so cute but anyway it's 100 percent super wash maria um back to it okay oh so like the power would go out and he'd be like and I was, he was like okay i'm gonna try again i'm like okay so we would watch like and of course because the power would go out it wouldn't say where we were on the dvd so the we'd have to like go and find it you know and i would try to remember what minute we were at after the second time this happened foreshadowing so um so then he would turn it back on and then we watched like four minutes of it and power go off <laughs> and, they'd be like, and then we would try again so really it was like f the fifth time i think we finally got it all the way through the movie <laughs> but anyway that had nothing to do with shenanigans shenanigans subset um <clears throat> So that was all to say that legitimately there were high winds and storms on Halloween. So they moved it to Friday night, which was awesome anyway, because then you don't have to worry about your kiddos getting up for school the next day. And I'm sure all the teachers in the 
area were like, yeehaw! Because they didn't have any hyper, wound up, exhausted, candy fueled children the next day at school. So that was good for them. Um, so we did that. I mean, we always trick or treat in a friend's neighborhood because our neighborhood doesn't really trick or treat, um, do the trick or treat thing. So we always go there and we all get together and it's a very fun time. It's a fun time for all. And what else? What else? What else? What else? Where's another shenanigan? What was it? Oh, it was a food shenanigan. <laughs> The next, the next day, so if Halloween, we celebrated, we did trick-or-treating on Friday. And so on Saturday, we were all going to get together, all of our friends we had just trick-or-treated with. But, you know, you can't really visit when you're trick-or-treating. It's late, blah, 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 blah. So they decided that, well, we all decided the next day we would get together for a hootenanny. And by hootenanny, I mean we would all sit around the table and eat some food and hoot, but not really nanny so much. Or maybe we would nanny, but not so much hoot. You know what I mean? So they all came over, but the exciting thing about them coming over, well, was their enjoyable company and sparkling conversation. But also, for some reason, I decided that I had to make fondue. Not some reason. You all know. Lala, of, Laura, of the um, Nick Girls, was talking about her pizza fondue. <laughs> Which, I'll admit, sounds slightly horrifying to me. <laughs> I love you, Laura. Um, but I decided that we needed to have fondue. Because that sounded very festive and autumnal and cheesy and apple-y and bready. Hi! Cheese, apples, and bread. Thank you. I'm done. Hi. So I made beer for cheese fondue because I'm not fancy enough to use wine. Like my people are from Appalachia. If it's not corn liquor or beer, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> There's no Pinot Grigio in my bloodlines. Um, actually, what happened is we're looking at the fondue recipes, and some of them were like, "Don't you use a woody, an oaky white? Do you use the Pinot Grigio or something?" Kimberly, I was just like, "Oh, where's the beer recipe?" Because <laughs> the helpful people at Target really don't know if this white wine is oaky or not. Okay, okay. At one point in my life, I really felt like I needed to know about wine, and now I've need, I've realized that it's just not who I am. I'm not fancy. <laughs> but this leads into another thing, so wait for it. So anyway, so we made the fondue, and it was awesome. It involves Gruyere. I don't like Emmentaler. Do you like Emmentaler? I did not use Emmentaler. I don't care for it. I don't like Swiss cheese in general, except, well, I guess Gruyere is considered Swiss cheese, isn't it? But I don't like Emmentaler. Ugh. It's too tangy. And I like a sharp cheese. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like, I would really prefer Velveeta in this cheese pot. I think I might be a super taster, and there's something in it that tastes too vinegary to me, and it bothers me. So maybe I just haven't, but I've had some fancy Emmentaler people because I'm a fancy cheese eater because in that way I am fancy. Um, but I just don't care for it. I was actually a cheese monger at Wild Oats for a while, but the one that was whole, that's Whole Foods now. It was Wild Oats. I was a cheese monger. Did you know that about me? I totally was. Anyway, so it was like a Gruyere. I don't freak out foodies. It was beer, Gruyere, and sharp cheddar. Oh my God, it was so good. So I say don't freak out foodies because some of them are going to be like, you cannot do oh, pasta fondue. Hush. It's delicious. But the reason, the reason how this happened was I was in the grocery getting the beer because we don't really keep beer on hand because I'm also not that fancy even. But for some reason I was in the grocery line and I was in the, the alcohol area. And they had the hard cider. And normally, I'm like, oh, hard cider is just, it's just a wine cooler. Nobody drinks that too serious about things. I just, just get a bottle of Boone's Farm and move on. You know, you had a strawberry fields. Anyway, sorry my teetotalers. I come from teetotalers. I'm a fallen teetotaler. But anyway, <laughs> it's my not understanding of wine. Um... Oh, so there was the hard cider. And I was like, oh, hard cider is just, I've always been so snotty about it. Like, just wine coolers, just boots, farm. And then all of a sudden, I had this revelation in the grocery store. I love apples. Period. Why would I not support all things apple-y, including their alcoholic forms? Also, this happens to do with the fact that we watched a long documentary on the, um, 
prohibition. And there was like a three minute mention of hard cider and that that was the only alcohol that was never outlawed during prohibition because it was considered like they wanted to have the ladies. It was a considered a way to preserve your fruit. So they didn't outlaw it during prohibition. Right, I would have been up in that. But anyway, so the, the, those things coalesced with me eating a lot of cheese and bread and apples to make me realize that hi hard cider why have i just dissed you all this time so now i'm on a hard cider kick i'm going to want if this is my precog shenanigans i have convinced my husband that he has to take me to our new day meadery which sells mead but they also do three hard ciders one of which is dry i'm so excited about that one because do you know this is like do you know this? I don't know anything about hard cider. This is me making stuff up. But, you know, all of our apples that we eat now are sweet apples, and they would make good sweet cider. But, like, how do they make the hard cider with these apples? Are there still apple varieties hanging out in America that are, like, the old, the olden time? They have them in Europe, in England a lot. But do we still have some of the bitterer, bitterer, bitterer cider apples? Or are they all just gone? Are they all lost in the mists of time? I need to forge on with that shenanigan of the mind and the palate and the appleiness. So I'm excited about that. Okay, that was a lot of me talking. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the show. That's all it is. <laughs> Why am I surprised? But let's get into knitting and spinning. Fondue's awesome. If I had a, I would totally eat fondue right now on this camera. I don't even care. It's so delicious. The only thing that saves me from not eating fondue for every meal is that it does require you to. You know, it's a lot of cheese. Not that I'm afraid of eating cheese. But, you know, it's, it's a significant expenditure in cheese. <laughs> so here's some spinning. Let's talk about wooly stuff, which is what this show is supposed to be about, in theory. This is some hand spun that I have completed. This is um, Falkland from... Godiva Yarns, sorry, who is giant, kindly generated, generated, donated to this podcast for gifts. This is. These are two numbered colorways because she doesn't name her colorways. They're just numbered. So it's four ounces of each of those two colorways, which I I spun and then plied together. And they're very, you can see they're very similarly. One was a little bit richer than the other. Here's my leftover skein of significant yardage, which I um, had to do from a single, from a center pull ball. But isn't it cute? so cute? So anyway, this is Falkland. Did I say that already? I probably did. I don't know. I got about, what did I think? What did I decide? A little bit over 400 yards, I think. Or right around 400 yards. Right around 400 yards. Of what I would consider to be an Aaron bulky one or the other. It's very, it's still a little damp, but it's very squishy. And it's very, like, wet. It's very November to me. This is November colors to me. It's, like, not as poppy and exciting as the true beautiful peak of the leaf season. It's just, like, the all the wet, kind of moldy leftovers. <laughs> That's what this looks like to me. But in a good way. So I'm enjoying it. I enjoyed it. I continue to enjoy it. What will it be? I don't know. It's very floofy, though. Fluffy. Still damp. Okay, so there's that. I do not have any spinning works in progress. Let's go into knitting. Do I have any finished objects? Oh, I have finished objects. Oh, I always forget the sock blockers. Why am I such a fail at that? My back from Joanna Spring that's been fun. Okay. And Malia. Okay. I am knitting the seamless Salomas for holiday gifts. So here's a pair and this is knit with Barocco vintage chunky which the pattern is written for worsted weight so I'm having to do some adjusting and I believe this is colorway 61173 I believe and one pair takes this is a pair to fit a size I would say probably a women's size seven ish in that ballpark because they're very stretchy and this is how much of a chunky I have left over so very comfortably can make one skein out of one one pair out of one skein if you're doing your holiday shopping I did say this is written for worsted weight yarn right and this of course was written up by the lovely Megan of the stock and zombies and the lovely Rista 13 I'm still calling her Rista 1313 of girl cave bags <coughs> 
So there's that. I have many, many, many pairs to go. But that's okay because they're very pleasant to make. Um, I'm knitting those on US 6s. More finished objects. I have them. I'm not even kidding you. In my lovely bag from Knit Run Digs. And Liza, if you're watching. I finished my Mamaw's socks, which I knit from Opal in their newish -y, um Little Prince colorways. This is number 7763. Did you see that Simply Socks, Simply Sock Yarn? Am I making it? Simply Sock Yarn, right? Did you see that they've changed their shipping policies and now you get free shipping if you order over like an X dollar amount? Oh my gosh, it's so dangerous. <laughs> Plus, they're like two hours away from me. Oh, I'm so dangerous. <coughs> I was actually all week trying to figure out a reason we needed to go to Fort Wayne so that I could go there. <laughs> On Saturday or Tuesday, which are the days she's open for the public. <coughs> so sorry. Um, so these are my socks from my memoir. Aren't they cute? I love this colorway so much. I knit these on double zero double points, which means that they are made of iron wood now. I think they're like nine stitches to the inch, maybe even a little bit more. So originally I cast on 72 stitches was what I use, what I use for a sock circumference because I have very big lady feet, big lady feet. Um, I knit these from the cuff down. They're just in a six by two rib. Um, what was I going to say? With a regular old slip stitch heel. And a gusset and all that good jazz. Oh, so they're my normal st circumference, but I had not knit on double zero double points, or I had actually had knit a pair of socks on double points forever. And apparently, on double points, my gauge is a little bit tighter than it is on circulars doing magical loop. Magical loop, not magic loop. Magical loop. Um. So I, that was a learning experience. <laughs> So I'm very excited that I have my socks for my mammal now. I'm a little sad they're not for me. Because <laughs> I really dig this colorway. It's not my usual colorway at all. Lately, I've been really excited by yellow, though. I don't know what that's about. I was very excited about gold for a very long time. And now I'm like, yellow is very exciting, which I don't understand what that's about. It's not a good color for me at all. But are those fun? So I think those would be very good socks for her. I think they will wear well and be magical. Okay, so now that's all of my finished objects. Yes? Yes. I have a half-finished object. What's in that bag? Oh, that's that. Oh, okay. I am knitting some other socks that I actually... Those I had worked on last week, and these I have worked on last week. I just forgot to show you them. Um, this I actually worked on when I was on the way to Rhinebeck and ripped out multiple times on the way to Rhinebeck, or on the way back, or on the way there being there. This is um, uh, the Opal Magic Eyes. No, Magic Eyes. Smoky Eyes. In colorway, ooh, I think it's 6643. Because I think 608 is the dialogue. But anyway, and this is gifted to me for my birthday by the lovely Brahman. Thank you, Brahman. So I have Un Sok Adavit. And I'm not cast on the second one yet. And this one is for me. Is a little flutter. Um, I did use the regular. I used circulars to do magic loop for these, um, and I was getting a little bit concerned that maybe my double zero circular gauge was a little snug for my ankle. So I did the ankle. I did these cuff down as well. And usually I'm a toe up mag afterthought heel girl, but I've just been I don't know crazy lately. So I did these cuff down and I did the cuff on a zero. So it's very stretchy for my big fat lady leg. But then I, so the reason I had to rip it out is because I did the heel flap and the turning the heel and all that in, in the zero thinking I could just make it a little snugger. And I looked at it and I was like, it's way too loose. So I had to go back and redo that with a double zero. So now the cuff is with a zero and the foot is with a double zero. And I think that will work out well for me. So yeah, that and I am trying the Addy Lace double zeros. I have resisted these for a very long time because the Addy Lace smell really bad. They smell like irony blood. So if you're a vampire, they are the needle of choice. But for us non-vampirics, they smell they stink. But the oh, but the double zeros do 
are not as offensive. Now your hands do kind of smell funky after you use them. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but they don't, they're not as offensive as the larger size. I think I've used a three in the past and they were like disgusting. And there is something you can do. There is on the internet. There's something you can do to make them not stink as bad. I've just not been that motivated to do it. Okay. Um, other things you've seen before. The traveling rib hat, which is by Danny Ouellette, perhaps. Ouellette, Ouellette, Ouellette. I'm getting this for my husband very slowly. That's how much I have so far. So it goes like this. And then you do the top. And I don't think that's giving away too much because you could tell that just from looking at the picture. Well, if you were an experienced knitter, you could. I'm not saying everybody could. And this is with my Fat Squirrel Fibers DK Superwash. And it is um, Bloodroot and Medallion Blue. I think it looks pretty. This is actually one that I think looks prettier on the camera than it does in real life. It looks very rich. Ooh. And that's in my bag from Java Jenny. Kitchen counter crafter. Um, okay, there's still more. Don't worry. Okay, so then I have another pair of socks. I'm on a sock kick. Usually I'm on a hat kick. I am on a sock kick right now. And I'm never on a sock kick. This may be officially my first one. I only usually have one pair of socks on the needle at any given time. In the last two months is the first time I've ever deviated from that, I believe. Or pretty close to it, anyway. Don't backdate me on that. Shush. Um, but I really need more socks. And this is kind of the surprising thing about socks. I used to be, I, I used to really enjoy having knitted socks, but not necessarily making the knitted socks. Because I only would take them to like knit on the playground or like in the car. And so they took forever. But somehow when you actually knit on the socks, they get done a lot faster. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> so here's another pair this is for a friend for the holiday time-ish and this is croy socks Patton's croy socks in the rag shades does this have a name yes it's the brown striped rag I love this I totally want to steal them for myself but I'm not going to and these are on carbon's regular zero double points again I use double zeros for magic loop but just I think zeros for We'll see, because this is a little bit heavier sock yarn. I, who knows? So this is for a feller. I'm only doing 68 stitches because I hope that's okay. I guess I should try it on myself just to see. Because now I'm looking at it like this is going to look very wide. But I think it's just because I have such wide sock feet that I'm like, hmm. Because again, th this is more of a sport weight almost, or a heavy fingering, if, if that. But I love these colors. Aren't they pretty? And I am going to do a gusset heel, especially when I make socks for other people. I tend to do them top down, cuff down with a gusset heel because the gusset heel is fits more people comfortably than an afterthought heel. Um, and also that way, the cuff down part is because that way it's much easier to adjust the length if they are wrong uh, rather than doing if you do them toe up. I always do toe up socks for myself. Unless there's a gusset, because I have trouble fitting a gusset correctly if I do toe up. Does that make sense? It does, to me. Anyway. So, ta-da! There's that. So I have the cuff, and I've just started the heel flap. I'm not, I didn't make them very terribly long, because A, I don't like my socks long, so I just think nobody else does either. And B, it's got a man foot, so I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough yarn. I love it! I keep looking at it like, oh, I need more of that for me! So there's that. This has even had a project bag yet. I just started it last night. Oh, okay. What else is there to show you? I'm not going to show you that because I don't know if I'm really... I have, I've started a sleeve on a sweater for myself, but I just don't know where it's... I'll show you and you can maybe you can help me. This is the um, Afterlight by Amy Herzog, which is a fingering weight sweater. It looks something like that. Very plain Jane. And I, am, I want to knit it with this Knit Picks um, Stroll Tweed which is a 65% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 10% tweed. I really, I just don't know. I think I am going, I just need to rip this out because it is the gauge I got was, is I knew that my gauge would be looser than the pattern stated because 
it's a fingering weight sweater for me and I'm just going to knit a little looser gauge <laughs> so that it don't have like 9,000 stitches to do with my unholy circumference. Um, but even so, it's it's actually looser than I even kind of anticipated it would be. So, and I did a hat out of this yarn, so I had some idea that I wanted it to be slightly tighter than that hat, so I went down a needle size, but really the gauge is almost exactly the same as it would have been the needle size up. So I think I need to rip this out and then start again. But I think I like the fabric that it's created. It's she specifically says that you want to make sure that the fabric is drapey because there is a gather at the deeper v-neck. And I, I do like the fabric. I think I just need to rip it out and make it smaller. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I think that's what I'm going to do, right? But I may not do it until after the holidays. Or at least until after I get this next project I'm about to show you done. So the next project is a sweater. Sorry. Sweater for my husband. Sorry, I didn't mean to freak you all out. And it is knit with some of my favorite yarn in the entire universe. So those of you who are familiar with the show will know I'm about to hold up one of two yarns. This is one. <laughs> so I'm knitting this with Beaver Slide Dry Goods. This is the first time I've ever used their Fisherman weight. I believe that's what it's called. Their three-plied McTaggart Tweeds Heathers. I believe it's consider their fisherman way. It's the three ply. This is the Hidden Lake colorway and this is 100% merino. So a lot of their, um, especially their two plies, I think, definitely their sport DK weight has mohair because it's nature's nylon. Just makes it a little stronger. And then a lot of their other blends, like a lot of their other, their two ply, which is like a worsted and their three ply, which is like an Aaron to bulky. Um, to have a have a lot of them have a mohair component for strength. I did not go with the mohair one because A, I liked this color when it was not available in a mohair content. And B, it's for my husband and you know. <laughs> it's a cardigan. Shush. Anyway. So this is um do I have the swatch? I knit the smallest swatch in the universe. I did. Here's my, here's my smallest swatch in the universe. But you may be. I'm just going to try and focus for just a moment. Let's just let's do a little looky loo. I guess I could really show you in that, and that would even be better. So here is what the fabric looks like as you're knitting it. Come on, focus do it. Well, this is a failed experiment all over the town. I guess it's focusing now. And then here it is after it's been washed. Can you see the difference on there? I don't know if you can or not. <laughs> there are so many. Yeah, you can totally tell the difference, right? Yeah. So th this is a specifically a yarn that does bloom quite a lot. And, and softens quite a lot upon the washing, considerably. So it's very soft. Well, it's merino. <laughs> and I'm just knitting a generic, again, a formula sweater and bud, easy, whatever, Elizabeth Zimmerman. And it's a, it's going to be a, he picked out, we looked at several on Ravelry, and he liked the look of the one that was the 4x4 four four rib, which again, you saw in the swatch which kind of surprised me. It seemed a little jazzy, but whatever. And then it'll be, I believe I'm going to make it a raglan at the top. And he wants a zipper. So I, I didn't really know that I cared for the look of the I-cord edging. I'm so sorry. <coughs> of the I-cord edging with this very bulky yarn. So basically what I did is like a, I don't know if I like what I did, but what I did was, it, essentially a two stitch I cord. So it's just like a little bit of a folded edge just to give it a little bit more stability when I put a sweater in it, but put a zipper in it. Does that make sense? So I didn't necessarily want to go back and put a, some sort of edging on it. And then again, put a zipper in it. So I thought, well, that would give it a little bit more body on the edge. My scroll bags. Um, that would give it a little bit more body on the edge. <laughs> than just a straight up like slip stitch or whatever. But I'm not sure that really did. It just was in my head that it did. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's all the knitting is bedding. 
Now here is the, I bought all the stuff. Secretly, I bought more stuff than this, but I'm too ashamed to show you. I'm really not, but, well, I kind of am. I'm just going to admit that I am. I'm now I'm ashamed to admit that I'm ashamed. <laughs> oh, it's a vicious echo. So, but I bought this, and maybe I'll show you the next thing next time. Desert Vista Dye Works. Okay, so this, okay, so this one is the Peter Max colorway. It's a self, and that's, of course, it's self-striping. And it is super crazy town 5000 but for some reason i saw it in the picture and loved it i think one of the reasons i loved it ever so much in the picture was again i'm having this weird obsession with yellow and in reality it's not yellow there is a and it's she said it on the thing she you know she lists the colors like black plum lime green aqua apricot but it read kind of yellow and it's even kind of reading yeah so maybe it'll actually read yellow on my feet even it read yellower in the picture, again, just hap with this the the scariness of buying yarn online is sometimes that happens. But I still really like it. It's just not exactly what I thought it was going to be. But I, right? It's totally fun and crazy and weird, and not my colorway at all. I've been trying to do more of that lately. So I think it's gonna make super fun socks. I think it needs to be groovy socks. I don't have to decide for sure. And then this one I have actually almost bought. I don't know seven times, and finally I broke down. It's the grade school turkey colorway. You know, like when you made your turkey with your hands. And so it is like a rusty red, an orange, a yellow, and a brown. So it's totally my colorways. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that one of the stripes, I believe the red stripe might be fatter than the others or something like that. And I'm on a sock kick, so hush! You don't need to hush. It's really, it's ridiculous. Okay, so now it's time for shameless self-promotion. If you don't want to stick around, I don't blame you one little bit. Okay, I'll blame you just a little bit. It's my livelihood. <laughs> but only, like, it's like a nanometer. So you can totally deal with that. And I'll see you next time. But if you want to stick around. Okay, so I'm doing a holiday update, a winter holiday update on November 8th. That is a Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Eastern Daylight Time. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. I'm not sure I'm going to have everything done in time. Because I may have been a little ambitious <laughs> in the amount of fabric I purchased. <gasps> so I haven't decided yet. I'll, I'll do one of two things. I'll either do um, all of the bags that I will have eventually. And I'll do them in one update. But some of them will be listed as either some will be listed as pre-order or it'll say something like we'll ship by X date. Um, or I might do two updates. I haven't decided yet. But I'll somehow make you aware of that. So here we go. Okay. So here's the first bag. Oh, so these are all gonna be novelty print, like cotton prints, instead of my my normal decorator prints. So be aware of that they are interfaced. The majority of them are also lined with a high quality cotton, like a quilter's cotton, but they are not as, they're not as sturdy as a decorator fabric, right? This fabric is meant to make quilts out of, the other fabric is meant to make pillows out of, so I mean, you know, or chair covers, you know what I mean? So there's a difference in the, heavy, the heaviness of the fabric. But these are still very good bags, and I do them every once in a while just for bunsies. So this is bag numero uno. You can see I now have tags. Look, I'm so fancy. They say fat squirrel. They don't say anything on the other side. Just blank. Fat squirrel. Also, I have decided to change how I do the handles on the cotton prints. I have now started interfacing the handles as well. I was not, I was, it was kind of a hard decision, but really ultimately I think when they're not interfaced, they were just a little too flimsy feeling for my taste. I like sturdy stuff. Okay. And there's the inside of that one. It's got cookies. See, it's it's coffee, tea, uh, cocoa with cookies. I couldn't resist. Some of these will have a white background for the cookies, so they ran out of the red. But also, there will be this one in a red in a sweater size bag. Hopefully, again, as I said, I'll let you know somehow. Okay, so then there's this one. Again, tag. That's world. And this one has gift scissors. And it says things like, a gift for you. Holiday something. Nothing says Christmas. 
Let it shine, or Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa, or any religiously specific holiday, or solstice -iness. Is there's that one. It is not sparkly or anything. And then here's this one. I don't know why, but I dig this fabric in such an intense way. And there's another coordinate of it that's like really weird. It's this greenish color, the limeier green with like poinsettias on it. And I love it. And it's so weird. I don't know what it's about, but I love it. I dig it. I'm not sure why, but I dig it. And look, it's got a funny zipper, <laughs> but it matches. And inside, holidayness, peppermints, and holly leaves, and berries, and whatnots. So as you can see, these are all the large wedge size. There are a few that will be sweater sizes, but the majority of them are the large wedge. <coughs> Sorry, that hasn't been ironed yet. Uh, the majority of them are the large wedge, simply because when I'm doing these decorator, uh, or the decorator, when I'm doing the quilter's cotton, I generally don't want to put them in a sweater size bag because I don't think they have enough body. This time I am making one exception with the red of this, which will have white cookies inside because it's really cute. I couldn't help it. Um, but generally I don't like to do that because I don't think they're sturdy enough for the larger bag. Speaking of a sweater size bag, would you like one? You can have this kind. I dig this too. This is totally like my mom's style, but I think it's super cute too. And it is lined with um, my standard heavier lining, but it's also interfaced. So this is a quite a sturdy little bag. I like this one quite a bit. So if I can line them with that that natural um, unbleached fabric, I don't mind as much because it's a heavier fabric. But again, I'll make an exception with the coffees because I really loved it so much. Now the rest I'm going to show you just fabric because I'm not there yet. See, again, hence the, I may have been a little bit ambitious discussion earlier. But I couldn't help it. It was exciting. <laughs> so there is this one. If you are a fan of the a pinkier, greenier colorways. And it will have this lining. Again, available in a large wedge. There is this one. Holiday ornament tastic No. It will have this lining. Tree. And it'll have hot pink zipper. Let's just be clear. Hot pink. And then there's this one, which I secretly also love. Even though those are not my colors, but I love them. See, it's the little cars with the bikes with the trees on them. Like they're taking them home to decorate. And then inside you will have this awesomeness. Crazy reindeers. <laughs> and lime green. So there you go. Was that enough insanity? I believe it was. So again, that hap that update will happen definitely November 8th. There will be some things there. And I'll decide whether I'm going to put everything there or if I'm going to do two updates. I can't decide. But I will try to make it very clear, like, if, you know, if it's not a bag that's going to ship out right away. Okay. I think that's everything. That's a lot. So anyway, I hope you have a lovely, super fabulous week. And I'll talk to you next time. Hopefully with more information about apple cider. Bye.